We have multiple big flare players on the Earth-facing disk, and back-to-back -back solar storm launches are going to give Earth a one-two punch. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Our sun really turns up the volume this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see no less than eight active regions in Earth view. Two of these, which are big flare players, are now rotating off of the sun's west limb, but we still have regions 30, 56, 57, 58, and 59 that are all big flare players. They have been giving us some big radio blackouts, and we've been dealing with that over the last couple days, and we do still have a risk for X-class flares, but thus far, only M-classes. It's not been too bad. But meanwhile, this is not the biggest story. If we take a look back on the 15th, you can see this big snake-like filament that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and wham, right there, it launches off. You can see it almost flipping upside down. It's almost kind of cartwheeling off the sun. That actually launches an Earth-directed solar storm. When we take a look at the coronagraphs, you can see this big partial halo. That shows us that this storm is Earth-directed, and we'll talk more about the models in a minute. Meanwhile, back on the sun that isn't the only thing. You can see a little bit more of it begin to lift off back on the 16th, but then as we look about midway through the 16th along the west limb of the sun, we've got two eruptions nearly simultaneously, and that once again launches yet another Earth-directed solar storm. In coronagraphs, once again, another second partial halo. This solar storm is also Earth-directed, so both of these storms are now on their way to Earth, and it looks like we're going to get a one-two punch. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the activity over this past week, we can see that the X-ray flux is sitting in and around the seafloor, and that means by proxy the solar flux is also pretty high. We're sitting well into triple digits. We're actually beginning to inch up to nearly 200 as we get closer and closer to a solar maximum in this cycle. And this means that we've got great radio propagation on Earth's day side, but as you can see by all of the flare activity, it's going to be noisy on those radio bands. In fact, we've had one, two, three, four, five M-class flares over this past week. The biggest one being on the 14th. This was an almost an M3 flare from region 3058. And yes, it gave us a decent radio blackout on Earth's day side. These conditions will easily continue over this next week. So you amateur radio operators, emergency responders, and GPS users know that radio propagation and radio signals will be disrupted on Earth's day side sporadically easily over this next week, and this is likely going to continue as we see even more active regions rotating to it into Earth view over the next few days. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, over the past couple weeks, we've actually had a little bit of storming. In fact, back on the 7th was when we got hit by that stealthy solar storm that was followed by kind of a fast wind chaser, and that actually bumped us up to storm levels for a decent while, and lasted until about the 8th, gave us some decent aurora, cleared down to mid-latitudes. It was kind of a nice surprise show for all of us, because that solar storm was oriented just perfectly. Let's hope this next set of solar storms will do the same thing. Meanwhile, things began to calmed down, and then we bumped up again a little bit back on the 11th and 12th. This was mainly due to a small pocket of fast solar wind. Got a little bit of aurora from that, but things since then have now calmed back down, and it's kind of the quiet before the storm, because right about the 19th and easily into the 20th and possibly the 21st, we're going to get hit by those two solar storms back to back that could easily bump us back up to storm levels and bring aurora down to mid-latitudes once again. So aurora photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Now, when we take a look and we see that first solar storm launch, remember, this is the storm that launched on the 15th that was that beautiful snake-like filament that kind of erupted like in a cartwheel motion off of the sun. This one looks like it's going to be a direct hit at Earth. NASA has the impact time being early on the 19th, so aurora photographers 
make sure you get your batteries charged and get ready because this will be the beginning of the storming that could last over the next several days. Now, if we take a look at that second solar storm that was launched, this was the one that kind of was a composite eruption that launched pretty much from the west side of the sun, but had kind of a southward part and the northward part, and it kind of all kind of came out together. This one is going to be the weaker of the two punches, but it does look like it's still going to get, be kind of a side swipe at Earth. This should happen uh, around the early part of the 20th. So as we're beginning to calm down from that first solar storm, we're going to get hit by that second one, and that should kind of enhance things a bit and possibly keep us storming for a bit longer. So Aurora photographers, clear down in mid-latitudes. It looks like you're going to get a lot of chances over the next, over the rest of this week to be able to get some decent Aurora show. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo's view, up in the north on the west part of the sun, you can see that snake-like filament. And in fact, on the 15th, you can even see it erupt around midday. That ended up being Solar Storm 1 that's on its way to Earth now. And then as we move into the 16th, you can see down in the south, there's another filament launch. And that ended up being part of Solar Storm 2 that's also on its way to Earth. So Stereo got a gorgeous view of both of those eruptions. And now as we look past that to the center part of the disk, do you see this big, long finger? like black region or dark region rather this region is a coronal hole and it's going to be sending us some fast solar wind it is visible on earth uh, in earth view but it's not rotated into the earth strike zone that's going to take about another week for that to happen and when it sends us some fast solar wind that means we can get another chance for aurora so aurora photographers if this one two punch of these solar storms fizzles out don't lose hope because we're going to get another chance for more aurora show in about a week thanks to this coronal hole. Now, as we move and we look to the east part of the sun, well, believe it or not, there's even more active regions that have yet to rotate into Earth view. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we've got some potential more uh, big flare players rotating into view. So expect those radio bands to stay noisy, but also stay in the good range for radio propagation on Earth's day side in this coming week. Switching to our moon, we are now passing out of the full moon phase on our way to a third quarter, and by the 20th, the moon will still be about 50% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch some dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, or even noctilucent clouds, you're going to have this bright companion with you, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the back-to-back -back solar storms that are on their way to Earth are going to give us a one-two punch starting around the 19th. Now, NOAA has not released all of their predictions for the solar storm period, but at high latitudes, I'm expecting that we're going to see major storm conditions. In fact, up to about a 60% chance of a major storm on the 19th. Now, remember, this is going to be followed by a second punch from that weaker solar storm, and that could keep us storming at high latitudes, probably minor storm conditions, but up to about a 50% chance of major storming. And that will begin to slowly quiet down as we move in through to the weekend. So aurora photographers at high latitudes, you're going to get a lot of chance for good aurora shows if you're not battling that midnight sun. Now at mid latitudes, once again, we're going to see probably minor storm conditions from this first impact on the 19th, but we do have up to about a 30% chance of a major storm. It's all going to depend upon how that solar storm is oriented magnetically when it hits us, and we'll be able to tell whether it's going to be just minor storm or even a larger storm than that. But we won't be able to tell that until that solar storm hits us, and then we should be going to active conditions when that second storm hits us. Remember, that's the weaker one, and we'll begin to settle down, and by uh, Friday or so, we should be pretty quiet. But that's going to be enough for Aurora photographers to get some decent show at uh, mid-latitude, so definitely keep your batteries charged. And if these all turn out to be a bit of a fizzle, don't worry about it, because remember, next week we will be getting that chance for some more aurora with that big, fast solar wind pocket that's going to be coming from that coronal hole. 
Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have eight active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, and a bunch of them are big flare players. So NOAA's giving us about a 45% chance of an M-class flares, and even about a 10% chance of X-class flares over the next few days. And that means radio blackouts are definitely on the menu. GPS users, especially near dawn and dusk, be sure to stay vigilant because your GPS reception during these radio blackouts can get a bit dicey. Now also with the all of the uh, active regions means that the solar flux is still boosted well into the triple digits. As a matter of fact, we're beginning to climb close to 200. And we were actually at 170 not that long ago. So uh, amateur radio operators and emergency responders enjoy this boosted solar flux because this means uh, radio propagation on Earth's day side is good, despite the fact that you're probably getting a bit more noise on the bands than you like. Well, that's going to have to continue because we have this risk for radio blackouts, but we also have more regions rotating into Earth view over the next few days from the sun's far side, and that will continue to keep that solar flux boosted easily into next week. Now also because we uh, are climbing out of solar minimum, but now we're beginning to deal with solar maximum issues, everything is in the D1 normal range when it comes to radiation storms, but you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, we have to be remain vigilant because we have about a 10% chance of radiation storms over the next few days because of a few of these big flare players. So just stay vigilant and make sure you check the radiation conditions often. So the space weather this week has gotten very exciting. We have back-to-back -back solar storms that are on their way to Earth, and they could give us kind of a one-two punch and give us some gorgeous aurora that could last for multiple days, as long as that orientation of the magnetic field in those storms is the right way. It could be a beautiful show for aurora photographers, so be sure to keep your batteries charged. But don't worry, folks. These storms really are not that large. They're more like rainstorms than hurricanes, so you don't have to worry. We're not going to have a problem problem mitigating through them. Don't believe all the hype that you see on YouTube. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, things for you are kind of good and bad. It's a mixed bag. We enjoy having a lot of the bright regions on the Earth-facing disk because that boosts that solar flux and keeps it in the triple digits, which means amateur radio operators, you have wonderful radio propagation on Earth's day side. However, it also brings those radio blackouts that we don't like so much, and it brings a lot of the noise on the radio band. So you're just going to have to deal with that for a bit. Plus, once we have that solar storm or set of solar storms hitting Earth, well, that's going to cause some issues for you on Earth's night side. So you're going to just have to kind of deal with it both on Earth's day side and night side. You're going to have to switch to lower frequencies on Earth's night side once the solar storm hits and switch to higher frequencies on Earth's day side when you get those radio blackouts because the higher frequencies actually recover faster. And now you GPS users, well, you're going to have to kind of grin and bear it through this week. We've got those trip the flux in the triple digits, which you don't necessarily like when the solar flux is that high. It kind of affects uh, your GPS reception down at low latitudes. Plus, we also have those radio blackouts that that causes issues near dawn and dusk. And oh my goodness, as soon as those solar storms hit, well, Earth's night side anywhere near Aurora is not going to be all that great for you either. So you're just going to have to wait until things kind of calm down. And until then, be sure to be stay vigilant with the GPS reception because it could be a bit dicey even at low latitudes. And if you happen to be a drone flyer, be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.